We now move on to introduce variables. If you go to your palette, in one of all these many, many libraries, there is an item called the variable. If you don't necessarily know, and you will become more familiar to know where to look for which of the blocks, you can just, while you're on the palette, start typing variable. It will turn into a search box and it will filter all of the available um, items that do contain whatever you've already typed in your search box. So the variable happens to be in the agent components library or section or folder. And we're just going to click on it and drag it to our workspace. It is good practice to give your blocks and your variables and your parameters names that are both intuitive, but also kind of easy to identify. So for me, I always use a prefix VAR to indicate that I'm working with a variable and I'm going to call this variable number of units arriving. Very long name, but there's a kind of purpose to this long name. And you'll see that I don't use any spaces and every subsequent word I start with a capital letter. So it's easy to read. Um, so try to give your variables intuitive names so that you know what you're dealing with. Um, but the longer the names are, the easier they, um, it is to actually make kind of typo errors. In this case, I want this to be an integer and the initial value should be zero. The purpose of this variable is going to be to count the number of units that arrive at our machine because this little model can be seen as entities arriving at a machine. It then kind of builds up in the queue as work in process awaiting to be processed and then the operator uh, processes that unit on the machine and after it's done it's actually being released and um, kind of discarded downstream or moved on downstream in, in the production process. We're going to add a second variable, and this variable I'm going to call VAR shipping. So this is my shipping variable and my number of units arriving variable. The number of units shipped is also going to be an integer, and the initial value also zero. All right, so if we now run our model, We see that entities are arriving, they are queuing up, they are being processed, and they are sent down stream into the process. But nothing happens to our variable. So even if you have a very intuitive names, any logic does not know what to do with those variables. They are simply static variables, and you need to do something with them in your model. So let's do that. A variable can only be enacted on... Um, once an entity arrives in a block, uh, the entity is ultimately the, the thing that ensures um, actions are taken. So what we're going to do is in the source block, you will see that one of the areas where you can actually add specific actions. Um, and for the, for the source block, there are three points. On before arrival, and again, you can read this up in the um, uh, reference library. On before arrival means as the split second before an entity is actually being created, you can perform a certain action. Once the entity is created but it has not left the source block yet, you can do something else with the entity. Or once it leaves the source block, you can actually do something else. All right, and this is what we want to do. As soon as an entity is created and it leaves the source block, that is the point where we're going to consider it arriving at the upstream side of our, of our machine. So the action that we want to take here is to increase the value of the variable called ver number of unit arriving. And we don't have to type out the entire uh, variable name. There is a nice way of setting this up. When you um, are in, um, when you start typing and you press control space, It'll open up a what we call content assist or code completion. And you'll see that it, again, limits all of the available things for you um, in any logic, that, that any logic can actually see from, from a Java point of view. And indeed, there are our two variables, variable number of units arriving 
and we can simply select the appropriate one, hit enter, and now we don't have to worry of making any typos. There are three ways in which you can um, increment the value. I'm just going to show you in this tutorial uh, one, the others we've covered in class. So if you add after the variable plus plus, it means it'll take the variable and it'll add one unit um, to that particular variable. So it'll increment it by one. And that is exactly what we want to do. Similarly, we want to go to the sync block. And the action, there's only one action to be taken, and that is on enter. The point when a, an entity enters the, the sync block, as soon as it arrives, it'll trigger this action. And the action that we want to take is ver s. We just con um, press control space. There is only one option, so any logic completes it for us uh, in its entirety. And you can just say plus plus. We can save the model now. And run it. And now you'll see as soon as that value increments, our variable increments as well. And as a matter of fact, the difference between the number of units arriving and the number being shipped is the actual work in process that is being um, kind of delayed at this um, machine of ours. So you can use variables in a variety of places to perform a variety of functions. It is just one of these utility things that, that come in um, very handy when, when you build models. And you can address those variables. You can get their values from anywhere else in your model um, as well. As soon as you write the Java code, those variables are available to you. All right. <clears throat> we are now going to add a second source block. So for that, let's clear our search box. We know it's in the process modeling library and we just drag the source block to the bottom. And I'm going to call this source2. I'm not interested in that particular connection, so I'm going to um, delete that connection. And I'm going to add my own one. Double click on the connection point. And make sure that the last one where you connect it to is the port of the queue. But I'm now going to change the first source so that there is only one being created. So instead of 1000, I'm only going to create one unit. It still is going to be at second one. So it'll be one um, item per second, but it will only be the first item that is created and then it will actually stop. I now want to go to my second source and I'm going to change this one to not cre uh, create entities at a specific rate, but only if inject uh, function is, is called. It'll only be creating an entity when from somewhere in the model, this particular block is called in terms of, of its inject method. So if I run my model now, you'll see that one entity is created, it is then shipped, and everything pretty much stops. The time, the model time is, is not stopping, so the model will still carry on if we speed it up. It will still run until time 1000, which is something that we've set, but nothing actually else happened in the model. Only one entity was created, processed, and actually sent out. Nothing triggered source 2 to create an entity. To make it less confusing, we can just move the names a little bit, click on the block, then click on its name, and just drag it a little bit lower so that it is clear um, with which of the blocks the name is actually associated. So what we want to do is an entity will be created, it will be queued, it will be delayed in terms of being processed on the machine, and then it is sent downstream. What we're going to do now is as soon as that entity enters the sink, we want to trigger an entity being created at the source 2 block. And the way in which we do that 
there is already an action being taken. The first action was the variable shipping has been incremented by one. I strongly recommend that you go through the introduction to Java video tutorials, of which the link is available on, on the ClickUp website for this module. In Java, whenever you want to have multiple lines of code, you have to end that line with a semicolon. We can now add any amount of, um, of additional lines of code. So what we're going to do here is we want to call source2. We can start typing so, press control space, and there you will see that any logic picks up that there are these two blocks called source1 and source2, and we're particularly interested in source2, that object. When we press dot and control space again, it will show us all of the methods that are available for source2 as a block. You can add to custom population. The second one is an um, arrival. There's an arrival schedule which you can access. The one that we're interested in is that method called inject. And you see there's a helpful kind of pop-up that says inject generates n agents at the time of call. So you have to pass it one argument, which is an integer, to tell it how many units it should process. So that's the method that we want. We click um, enter, we, we hit enter, and we only want to create one unit. So we replace the n with an actual integer one. We'll save our model, and now we can run it again. When we run it, we actually see that every time an entity leaves another one is being created here. Now what is kind of peculiar is that the shipping variable is being updated. Whenever an entity arrives at the sink, the var shipping variable is incremented, but the number of units arriving is not updated, even though we've created 25 at this point. And the reason is kind of straightforward. The action that we've taken was only taken for source 1. If we want the variable to also be updated when an entity leaves source 2, we need to go and add that action on its exit as well. Again, so we start typing var control space, number of units arriving, plus plus, to increment by 1. And there you see it is updated correctly. Number of units arriving and the number of units being shipped is updated. Again, as I said, straightforward, small little basic example to show the use of variables. How do you deal with them in your model? And the fact that you can use source blocks both from an, a rate point of view. You can have inter-arrival time and you can also have um, manually injected um, methods called so that you can inject an entity to perform something in your model. This entity that is created here need not go into our queue. It can be triggered to go into any other block depending on how you connected your, your blocks. Mm -hmm.